There we go. Oh God. Oh God. So apparently we're not the only ones trying to get over these logs. That back paw print from a, a black bear. Got him. Got him. He's got him. Oh He's God. there. Oh. He's gone. Oh, dang it. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing Adventure. It's pouring rain, it's the end of fall, and that means one thing, time to fish a little water. We're on a tiny little creek today. We're kind of playing off of last week's video where we made our own lure and went out and tried to catch a fish on it. Today we're gonna to see how many fish of any species that we can catch on that lure and our other Addicted Fishing gear as well. I got my float rod, I got my lovely lady, I got my dog, and we're hiking this little creek in search of adventure. So stick around for today's episode. It's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be fun. I don't know what we're gonna catch, but it's a perfect day for fishing. So the theory of today is really gonna be try everything to catch these fish. Because again, there's multiple species in there. I really don't know what we're gonna catch. So when you're fishing these coastal rivers, it's neat because different runs of fish can come in constantly. But really what we're looking for is trout. Most salmon that are gonna be in this creek today are gonna to be spawning, so we wanna leave them alone. But adjacent to those fish, feeding on their little babies, are gonna be some awesome trout. So that's what we're really looking for, but I'm going out with the whole arsenal. I got Sink It Series jigs, I got my micro worms, I got my trout floats, rooster tails, and of course the homemade jigs. So comment below on which one you think is gonna catch fish the most this time of year. I haven't ever really found one to work better than the other. They all seem to work good. So let's go find out what works the best. Oh, there's a salmon right there. Big old dark, a little get back. You can't attack it. Looks like a big old dark coho, but it's not in a red, so let's give it a shot. Oh, he didn't like that. He did not even look at it. Nope. Let's try behind the log there. I think I see some more. Ooh, natural presentation. Oh, oh, yep, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh, oh that's a salmon though. That's a salmon though. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, he just chomped it. Little, little coho, oh, nice. Woo hoo, it's a trout sized coho. How perfect. Oh, he's off, he's off. Cool, first spot. Trout sized coho. That was like the perfect fish to catch on this rod. So I'm only using these two to six pound rods, you guys, which is not recommended for any sort of salmon species, but that's kind of what makes this kind of style of fishing fun is you never know what you're gonna catch. And when you do, sometimes you get your butt whooped. Oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna use the tree. We're doing a log, Johnson. Hog on a log. Hog on a log. This is There we go. Oh, they're flashing at it. So I want to go for it. That looks like a big cutthroat too. Oh, bounce pass into the bucket. Come on. Ooh. Just go right hand, right over your shoulder. Yep. Right, yeah, right handed over your right shoulder. Just do the flip right towards the butt of the log and the current will take it. Perfect, perfect, nice, slow, get it going. That was a perfect cast. Give it a little jerk when you start to reel next time. That's it. Yep. Oh, there's a big one coming into the hole right now. Real big one. Nice. Oh, that scared me. That looked like a fish. Yeah, okay. we're putting a sneak on them. I'm gonna try to change angles with my twitching jig. If I can hold it down there in front of their faces just a little bit longer. Oh, there's a bunch of them up in here too. I can see them all. Oh, that, oh, I had him.
Whew. The super soaker out there. So I can already tell this hole is absolutely stuffed with salmon. I don't want to pick on them too much again. So we got that little jack, lost them right at the bank. But I think if we go up river a little further, especially as this water rises, these fish are going to move on to reds. They're going to start spawning and the cutthroat fishing should be really good adjacent to those spawning beds. So let's go find some trout. Okay, stealth mode. Stealth is going to be a bit, big, big importance here today on this creek. Here, switch me back. Mainly because the water's so clear and it's so low. So the best thing to do, especially when you're fishing for a salmon or trout species, they're always looking up river. They can't turn around and look behind them unless they turn their body. So if you sneak up on a hole and you know the fish don't know you're there, it's best to start down behind them, basically lower in the hole and cast up to them, especially in a spot like this where it's nice and small. So let's do it. This looks good. Okay, it's the first cast, nothing. I'm going a little bit deeper again. I never touch bottom. It's imperative to be close to the bottom, so I'm going to go a little bit deeper with each cast here, a little bit further left. That is the spot right there, though. That feels good. Oh, my goodness. Wow, crazy no bites on that drift. I'm gonna have to find exactly what they want. It seems to go on and off in rivers like this. Day by day, it's certain, certain different kind of bugs or certain species of, of something. So we gotta find whether or not they want the sculpin, they want the worm, or they want the spinner. It's sculpin time now. I'm gonna sneak over here for this. Okay, here we go. Lamified, holy moly. Oh, son of a gun. They are in there thick, you guys. Two bites and two casts, I'm just missing them. They're being really quick. Snappy, I'm guessing it's probably because they're in and around all these salmon that they have to make quick moves or else they get, they get chomped at. Okay, first cast with the spinner. God, if I hook a big fish on this thing, it's gonna be a rodeo. Frickin' noodle rod. Oh, jeez. Jeez Louise. Snagged. Story of my life. Okay, no spinner anymore. Gonna have to re-rig that, but I'm too excited. There are too many fish in this hole. Now that I've spooked the heck out of it. Let's get back in there. There we go. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. That thing's huge. Oh God. That's a huge coho. That's a huge coho. And he nailed the, the sculpin jig. Oh God. How am I going to keep him out of this log jam without breaking my rod? Oh, look at him. He's a fire truck. Oh, come on. No, come back here. I'm only using eight pound test. Oh, he's all wrapped up. He's all wrapped up. Oh God. I don't like this. There he goes. Oh, shoot. Little, you're not helping. You're not helping. Oh, that was awesome the way he picked that thing up. I just see a switched angles. I came up river of him. I was able to keep that sculpin jig in his face a little bit longer. Oh, it's even a hatchery fish. Wow, this is cool. Look at this fire truck, everyone. Oh, oh, there he goes. Let's 
see if I can get him over here. Really do not want to break my rod here, everyone. Oh, wow, that's a big one. That's a big fish on a two pound rod. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth, little, don't you dare. Nope, nope, he's not done. He's not done. Look at that jig. That little red head got it done. It's crazy to think that even a coho would eat these sculpin like this this time of year. I think it's more out of a defense mechanism. Oh, don't you dare. Nope, no, nope, buddy. No, gotcha. Gotcha, brother. Gotcha, brother. <laughs> Look at that beautiful thing. Holy moly. What an array of colors on that fish. That is so cool looking. Look at that white jawline. That is so beautiful. All right, sweet prince. Thanks for playing with us. You weren't our target species, but hell, I ain't going to complain about catching a beautiful fish like this. Wow. Later, buddy. Woo! Fish number one of the day. Not the intended species, but I'll take it all day long. Brick's turn. Whoa, what are these? Rock. Someone's been raw counting in the background. Whoa. Look at that, all that like druzy. Take the pressure washer to this, clean it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are beautiful. Just like one of the, this one's just like the one we found last week too. So neat. All the adventure in the world on one little creek. Let's catch another fish. All right, we're not going with a spinner again. Now that I saw these hatchery salmon in here, which are totally fine to catch, a lot of these fish are gonna swim back to the hatchery and die anyways. So for if you're doing a nice, really ethical catch and release fishery on them, it's a lot of times encouraged by the state. That's why those fish are there is for us to go have fun with them. So I'm going to put this little guy on. This will catch the trout and the salmon equally. And there's nothing like reeling in a fish like that on a two to six pound rod. So I'm going to do that as much as possible. But we're going with the mini little Cleo. Danger. This jig looks like my hair in the morning. Looks like a troll. So sometimes with these Sinket Series jigs, guys, I'm switching Brooks up to a Sinket Series little red one. This one gets the, the trout just as good as the salmon. Um, but you can see I trimmed some of those hairs off. They were a little long. I want a little bit smaller body on the jig. And that's how you do it. Just give it a little haircut. Here, give this a toss. Try to get it close to those logs. That's it. Oh, that's looking good. So you guys can see here, I keep saying red and I keep saying spawning area. You can see how in the tail out of the front, there's actually a two salmon in here spawning right now and a jack. Um, you can see all this clean gravel that's moved around. That's not necessarily from the current of the river. A lot of times that's from the fish kicking it up and laying their eggs. So be very cautious if you go out and try to do some of the small creek fishing in an area where there's salmon to stay off that stuff. We don't want to walk in the river. We don't want to be tre treading across the eggs and, and killing those baby fish before they even hatch. Um, and then again, if you do see fish in there like this that are spawning, just leave them alone and go to a different spot. So, but I love this time of year. Leaves are falling, everything's dying, but there's still life and there's still fun to be had. So let's keep walking, find us a good hole. Let me have a look. Oh, look at the bear scratches. So apparently we're not the only ones trying to get over these logs. You can see that back pad, that back paw print from a, a black bear jumping over here. I could only imagine, especially in an area like this, we see all the stuff in Alaska, but in an area like this where we have so many spawning fish, I know that black bears have to be moving down into these areas and eating some of these fish. So beware of bear. I'm not the only bear out here today. Oh, someone's got you trained. Come on, let's go. Whew. Made it to super hole. Glasses are fogged up. But look at this little juice bucket behind us. Beautiful, beautiful hole. Seems we've kind of made it up and away from where the salmon are. I'm not really seeing too many of them spawning anymore, so this is where I think we're going to find these cutthroat. 
or any sort of trout species. So let's get a line in the water. That depth will be deep enough to start. Yep. Beautiful. Oh God. Oh God. Yep, pick that line up, mend it above the bobber. There you go, now let line out. There you go. And just remember, any resistance you put against it, it pulls it off the bottom. So with that mend, let that belly form. When you mend it, do it all at once. Make sure all the line all the way to the bobber comes off and lay it to the left, and then it'll start floating again. Yep, now just let it float. They'll do this thing. Dueling bobbers. And the yellow one on the inside. It's coming in hot. Oh, but the outside's picking up speed. Oh, it's a bobber down. What the hell was that? I even shallowed up on that cast a little bit. Same spot it went down last time, though. Little's not convinced. Hey, little dude. Where's the fish? Tiniest. They're not wanting our bobbers today. Might have to switch creeks. Luckily, this area that we're in, we have multiple different creeks right nearby, so we might jump around and start, try to, that's kind of the fun thing about fishing this time of year too. You have the option of catching salmon. A little bit dark, so we can't keep them and eat them, so I try to let them do their thing, but being able to fish around salmon, watch these things spawn, and be out here just in, enjoying mother nature and, and just watching it all go down in the late fall like this. All the, all the death brought with the new life of the new salmon that are getting born and, and again, the fresh little cutthroat and sometimes winter steelhead that are poking their nose in. So there's a lot of options, a lot of things we can catch. We still got some daylight, so we're gonna do it all. Back to the jig. I'm gonna go to the top of the hole so I can get a good angle here. It's all about the angle of the dangle. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, bottom. Oh, yeah, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Okay, now jig. Okay, try it back up in here again. Oh, that's the one. Oh, he's coming at it. Didn't that, oh, he is. Oh, God, he almost ate it. Did you see that? Oh. Just had one chase it out. Do that same cast. That was perfect. This is the cast. This is the cast. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uncount. Oh my god, that's the one. Let it sink. Okay, jig. Last cast. Just kidding, one more. Nope, let's go. Okay, plans have changed. We made it off the little creek, the sun's come out, and now we're in the jet boat. We're gonna get Brooke a fish today. That is the goal. And hopefully it's one that we might be able to cook for dinner tonight. These cutthroat trout are absolutely delicious. If we catch a salmon in the passing again, we'll probably keep it and probably eat it tonight. But who knows? We got a couple more hours of daylight left. The sun came out. The witching hour is upon us. Let's get the girl a fish. Okay, here we go. Let's turn. Let's pick up the jig. Do you want me to cast it like you did? Like, take it all the way back? Yeah, I kind of do a big swinging deal. Yep, and then it's halfway out there. And then so you're going to just keep the bale open and just let it float away as far as you can down there. The key is, with this though, now that we're in the big water, if it, when it goes under, don't yank. Just tweak her reel. So you practice for the day. Tweak her reel. Did it go under? It went under. That's what I thought. I don't know if I've seen something or not. Okay, keep giving it line. What do you mean by tweaker reel again? As soon as it goes under, just, just start reeling against it. Close the bale by hand and just reel tight. What'll happen is if you yank, you got all that line below the bobber. 
and that line below the bobber, you'll yank and you'll, you won't pick up all the lines. If you yank before you reel, the fish is gonna feel it and then shake the hook before you get your line tight. If you just reel your line tight, you'll actually keep them on. Beautiful. Oh, something, got something. Smoltergeist. Oh, he's gone. Okay, yeah, it's gonna get, as soon as we start rounding this corner here is where it's gonna be good. Where you, I want you to really kind of be expecting to get one. Oh, there he is! Oh, real, real, real! He's got him, he's got him! Oh, he's gone. Oh, that was close though. Ooh, that's what we were looking for. Bob it down, see. It might just be a really little one too, but who knows. That also could have been a 15 pound steelhead. Or about the same thing where you get bit like four or five times, you're like, what the hell? And then you'll finally get it. Yeah, he didn't bite. Oh, there he is! He's there, he's on. Oh, it's not it. Ah, do it again, do it again. Yeah, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> look at those clouds. <laughs> that doesn't look like fog. <laughs> that looks like snow ish. It looks snowy ish. There he is. You got him. You got him. He's got him. Oh he's God, there. No. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Dang it. Weather. Just for the video. It's well, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Show them the effing weather, she said. I don't know if we're gonna be able to fish this last hole before this hammers us. We've got some gnar gnar rain or snow. I shouldn't even say rain, but it's snow. It's not rain, it's snow. It's a tough decision, but it's one we're gonna have to make. Well, everybody, the moral of today's story is at some point, you have to just thank the creator for Chinese food. And that's how today ends. It was a great day on the water. Beautiful time to be out there. We caught some fish, we had some fun, we froze our butts off, and now it's time to eat. If you guys wanna see more fun videos just like you saw today, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up, and please comment below and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching everybody, you stay fishy. We'll see you out there.